So the Baltimore Ravens got a very, very familiar face back in the building today for training camp. And we got a lot of other stuff to cover as well. Team, keep it clean so we can get into it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video. And also click the thumbs up button, leave a like on the video because I wish there was a love button because we love this news from the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, he is officially back. He made his training camp debut, I mean, he practiced, but he did not practice in full. They said Lamar Jackson was out there for a little while, for a little bit, but then I guess, ooh, you know how when you get a stomach virus, and they did say it was a stomach virus, by the way, but when you get a stomach virus, you get a bug, and your first day back out, your first day out of the house, your first day off the toilet just to be straight up. We got to still keep it clean, but that's being real as well. When you first get back, you like, all right, hey, I'm back. Here we go. But then you got a little bit of leftovers where you're like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm not so back all the way. And I guess that's what Lamar Jackson was today. So it's going to be a ramp up process for Lamar. And maybe tomorrow he'll be a full go. Who knows? But the fact that he has returned, that is a good sign for the next couple of days because now from this point moving forward, he'll only get better. He'll only get healthier. And we want to see a healthy Lamar Jackson. And again, like we said before, when this thing first came out a couple of days ago, better he have this now, better he get this in and out of his system now than during the regular season. But speaking of Lamar Jackson, uh, again, he it was reported that he practiced for a little over an hour before heading inside with a few members of the team's athletic training staff. He looked a bit weary, which presumably was a result of battling an illness and practicing in high heat and humidity. Shout out to Jeff Zrebik for that report, and that's something that can play a big role as well. Because y'all know it's hot. It's really, really hot. And that heat, it'll drain you. So if you are already drained from whatever you're dealing with outside of practice, and Lamar was dealing with his illness outside of practice, coming to practice, participating with that sun boiling down on you, oh, yeah, that's a rough, rough combination right there. But how did Lamar Jackson do today? How did the offense do today? Because I was talking to my guy, Hayes, um, and he was talking about how he said, man, Lamar Jackson need to come back because Arthur Millett and his defense, they've been going crazy. So how were they when he got back? Well, shout out to our guy Kyle Barber because this is what he had to say. He said the defense dominated practice. Six interceptions. <laughs> now look, uh, it ain't all on Lamar though. Lamar took part in some, but they not all on Lamar. Let's read the breakdown from Kyle Barber. He said Marcus Williams had a pick six on Josh Johnson's first pass. Poor Marcus Williams said, look. I'm here, I'm healthy, and I'm ready, man. Let's start the season tomorrow. Um, then next up, he said Marlon Humphrey had two picks, one on Lamar Jackson and one on Josh Johnson. So Josh Johnson said, look, I ain't the only one. See, Lamar's doing it too. So Lamar might have been a little, a little rusty. But hey, uh, when, with, with interceptions in training camp and practice and stuff, they can be overblown either way. They can be overblown for the offense. They can be overblown for the defense. But now is the time, specifically for offenses, for, for quarterbacks, now is the time. Get them all out your system. Take those chances. Try yourself. Challenge yourself. Try to make yourself that much better. Push your limits. Because if you don't, then come regular season, when you're out there in games, it ain't going to be pretty. So push your limits, really challenge what you can do, what you're capable of. So if it's something that you struggle with, you'll get better at it in practice. That's what practice is for. That's what repetition is for. And like Ed Reed once said, you can't teach reps. You, you, you cannot teach reps. But anyway, continuing. Uh, so Humphrey had two, one on Lamar and one on Josh Johnson. Kyle Hamilton, he had one, but uh, Kyle Barber says some people said that he was out of bounds. I'm giving it to him because, again, we, we, we heard Kyle Hamilton speak yesterday. This is super modest Kyle Hamilton, super relaxed Kyle Hamilton, super humble Kyle Hamilton. That boy ain't humble out there on that football field. He's going to let you have it. Anyway, um, and Trayvon Mullen, <laughs> that boy Trey, Trayvon Mullen, he had two. But he, they said one was negated by a defensive pass interference. So he got a little physical, got a little touchy, pushy, feely. Everybody got negated. You, you sure that defensive passing defense wasn't on Marlon Humphrey? Anyway, continuing, he said Armin Davis. Ooh, Jalen Armin Davis picked up picked off Josh Johnson during the red zone drills. Okay, Jalen Armin Davis. That's somebody, in my opinion, he needs to have an amazing camp to even make the to make the team. 
in my opinion, just my opinion, because he is up against a lot. He's up against the tr current trajectory of his career with the Baltimore Ravens. These first couple of years, they haven't been so pretty. I know he's dealt with a lot of injuries. But then this year, I right, Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, they're back. Ravens signed uh, Arthur Millette. He's back. Then they drafted Nate Wiggins and a TJ Tampa. You still got a battle with, um, with Pepe Williams as well, even though I think Pepe, he's battling for a roster spot too. And then all these other corners as well. So for Jalen Armour Davis to make plays, to be making plays, it's super, super important. Super, super important. And I know even if he does make the team, it will be more so for special teams and whatnot. But still, man, he is up against a whole lot right now. So I hope he does well. I, I hope he does really well because it's a very, very intense, tough battle that he has to face uh, to make this roster. Or even maybe the practice squad. And somebody else who could be making the practice squad or could be a sneaky active roster pickup because he can play and has played multiple positions. And that's Malik Cunningham. Malik Cunningham is an interesting prospect for the Baltimore Ravens because for me, it's just you don't know which way this thing is going to go. We heard about him in OTAs and minicamp. They was like, oh, man, he's been making plays. But then, and shout out to Sarah Ellison for for catching this quote she said Ravens offensive coordinator Todd Monk said Malik Cunningham is doing a great job transitioning transitioning from quarterback to wide receiver uh, Cunningham is ahead of where Munkin had expected and Munkin said I'm really excited for him and for us now could that just be coach talk well no I don't think so because we've also heard the same thing from Jeff Zrebic also from Jamison Hensley and those guys they don't work for the Ravens but they cover the Ravens extensively and shout out to the both of those two now um with Malik Cunningham something that I've continued to say I think for him to make the roster is going to be tough too you think about the wide receivers that the Baltimore Ravens have right now and all the guys that are locks then you even think about the possible practice squad you think about how the Ravens could play with the numbers there and Malik Cunningham could go to get on there but it's tough for him especially since he is transitioning to wide receiver he's going up against a lot of guys that have been doing this wide receiver thing for a long time on a collegiate level some on a pro level so he got a lot of competition so for Malik Cunningham if he is going to make the roster or the practice squad, he just got to, like, show out extra, extra, extra uh, to, to have a chance to do those. But with him, he's a sneaky, like, prospect for the Ravens because he can do both. So Ravens, they could pull out some of the trick plays. They could line him up at some different places on offense because you can do so many different things with him. So that's what makes him making the team so much more appealing. Now, with Eric DaCosta, a lot has been said about Eric DaCosta and his tenure as GM of the Baltimore Ravens. He done had some hits. He sure done had some misses, too. But every GM has a good amount of both. But recently, one of the hits, even though they haven't even stepped on the field yet in regular season action, but I think it's going to be a hit, uh, is Eddie Jackson, who Eric DaCosta and the Baltimore Ravens signed a couple of days ago. And we assume that he is going to take over that third safety role uh, that was manned by Geno Stone, him, uh, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, and their, those three safety sets. Um, so with that being said, what was his contract? What were the details of the deal? Because we hadn't really heard much about it. We know it was a one-year deal, but for how much? Well, let's look at the breakdown from our guy Aaron Wilson, who used to cover the Baltimore Ravens a long time ago. But anyway, he said, Ravens Eddie Jackson's one-year, $1.5 million deal. So, like, even that alone, just based off of that, like, that's it's a, it's a win. <laughs> like, straight up, it's a win. Eddie Jackson could go out there and not – I don't think he will, but he could go out there and have a, a terrible season. And this will be still be a, a good deal. He can go out there and ball. He can go out there and have an amazing season. And this will be a great deal. This deal right here, 1.5 mil. And we're going to get into the breakdown of it that much more in a little bit. But even if the full thing was guaranteed, 1.5 mil, that's it. Even if the full thing was guaranteed, but it's not. It ain't even, the full thing ain't even guaranteed. 1.5, that's it. Let's, let's continue. So, <laughs> Eddie Jackson, one year, $1.5 million deal deal the salary is 1.25 mil the signing bonus is two hundred fifty thousand dollars one mil total guaranteed and seven hundred fifty thousand of his base salary is guaranteed that's it one mil total guaranteed one mil one mil so he got the chance to earn that extra of uh, five hundred thousand but like that is it's such a great deal 
And to me, it, it really reminds me of Jadavian Clowney last year. I don't remember exactly what the details of Jadavian Clowney's deal last year was. And y'all put it in the comment section if you remember. I know I can go back, but I remember it being such a steal. Y'all know me. I, I was with them signing Jadavian Clowney. I wanted them to get him for years. So really, <laughs> whatever they were going to pay Jadavian Clowney last year, it would have been good in my book. But I remember just looking back. Looking back at Jadavian Clowney, looking at the fact that the Baltimore Ravens got him on a one-year deal, and he exceeded expectations. He outplayed that deal by far. Jadavian Clowney was such an amazing player for the Baltimore Ravens last year. Let's hope that Eddie Jackson will be this year's Jadavian Clowney.